Hello everyone and welcome to the show. It's that show with me and him and them behind us. Who? Oh, they're not here today. They're just, it's just the ducks today. <laughs> just the ducks. Just the ducks. There's um, a lot of ducks. There is a lot of ducks with sunglasses. Um, thanks. So, um, <laughs> that was really helpful for all the people listening on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Yeah, for those thing. listening, I am holding up a duck wearing a chain, a hat, and some sunglasses. Not just a hat, that's a trilby, I think. It is a trilby. I've, I've decided that's a trilby. Because he cool. It's a trilby duck. Hold on, what were you here for? This is a business podcast. Mate, I'll be honest, right? <laughs> I'm not even sure what day it is. <laughs> well, it's Wednesday that this goes out. Wednesday that this goes out. So today is not Wednesday, is that no, what you're telling me? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Right. So I've got a one in six chance of getting this right. Oh, Jesse. Yes. Do you remember at the end of the last year, we said, maybe we'll calm things down this year? Uh-huh. How's that going for you? I know he actually saw it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, I ain't got time to edit it out. <laughs> and then Jesse, right? I'm, I'm t- so we've had manicness... Personal yes. stuff going on. Yes. More personal stuff going on. Yes. Health stuff going on. Yes. Both of More us health keeping stuff an eye on, on each other. Yeah. And then the, I may have agreed with my loving wife, who never listens to this, so I'm safe, right? That, that I would calm things down towards the end of June. Sure. That went, sure. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So um, June's the busiest month I've ever had in my whole business. Ever. Yes. Well, uh, honestly, for me, my whole life, from a working point of view, yeah. the last three weeks have been the busiest three weeks of my working life. We're doing well this, right? Yeah, so I'm so glad today, it's calmed down. Yeah. <laughs> today, we're going to talk with Petra Velzebar. Yes. And she makes some interesting points, Jesse. <sighs> Don't. No, she does. She, I she, know she does. We, why? Because we've already done the interview. We, yes, yes we have. and we've had so, her on the show before, and everybody loved that show because she was amazing. She's awesome. She's brilliant. She's yeah. lovely. She's gorgeous. She knows how to kick our backsides without realising she's doing it. I think she might even know she's doing it, you know. Do you reckon? She just puts off on a really nice, smiley, warm, smiley face and a really nice, calm tone. Just as she's kicking us up the bum. Has this whole show been rigged to kick us up the backside? Well, mostly we, we me, know, to we, be mostly you. But to be honest, I, I'm feeling the brunt with these shows lately. <laughs> okay, so by June next year, we'll calm things down a bit. <sighs> Please don't. I don't want to think that far ahead. <laughs> we got to get there first. Oh, I've just got to get past August and then. I always say this. I get past August and things calm down. Why? Why do we Why say? We say things like this, mate. The way things are going, I'll be glad if I get to August. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so this show. Um, honestly, we do have Petra Valzabar back. She is awesome. She is amazing. The interview is just stunning. Yeah. Ladies and gents, go have a listen. Newton's nuggets. Hello everyone and welcome back to Newton's Nuggets. It's that show where I get some amazing people, and I seriously mean amazing, okay? Today, this lady has been on the show before. The last time she was on the show, she caused an absolute stir because people were expecting some weird stories from someone who grew up in a cult and then found out that, honestly, she's one of the loveliest people I've ever known, ever met, ever chatted to, and all she wanted to do was help. So I'm going to welcome back... Petra Velzebar. Petra, thank you so much for being here, mate. Thanks for having me again. That's such an honour and a privilege to be asked back. Do you know what? The last time you were on, the show went out in February 2022. And it's, I can't believe it's been over two years already. I know. Time's really moving quickly, isn't it? Isn't it? And I, I do keep an eye on all the stuff that you're doing and things that are changing. And as I said to you before we started recording, I love what you're out there doing. I love how much you're trying to help people in pretty much every single step you take. So honestly, the fact that you've managed to take time out to come and sit and chat with us again, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to chat with you. You're doing great work as well, inf- influencing so many people's lives for good. So I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. Mate, honestly, the 
the way I look at it at the moment is there is a really good bunch of people that are trying to make a difference. And we're not, we're not trying to become millionaires out of doing it. We're trying to do it because we want people to have a better life. Um, but yeah, mate, right. Okay, let's talk. Two years since you've been on. The last time you were on, we talked a lot about mental health and we talked a lot about the whole pandemic and the whole lockdown and how somebody who had been told her whole life that the world was going to end next week anyway. Yeah. How you dealt with all of that, okay? So what changed? What's Petra out there doing now? What's your keynote talks about? Who are you helping and why? And I'm going to shut up. Well, I guess I'm really privileged that my business is still going strong, um, uh, you know, helping working with with organizations. And I just feel really uh, lucky and privileged that um, we're continuing to have impact because, you know, small businesses, they, they, they shift or change all the time. I've had a few yeah. scary moments, I have to say. Um, one of which, interestingly, my business a year ago was double the size, like we were going for growth and all this stuff. And then I realized that I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And so I made, uh, yeah, I know. So that, so I had to make, a, a, I guess, a radical decision to scale back, um, which is strange when everything in the world is like growth is better and bigger is better. Um, and so scaled right back to four people in the core team, associate facilitators that still help us um, here and there. And now it's just perfect and beautiful. Like, for, like everyone's different, right? So it's like finding just because you have mentors or people saying business should look like this doesn't mean yeah. it's the right fit for you. Um, but then what's really interesting in a post pandemic world is how many people now are experiencing burnout or are firmly in kind of survival mode. So I think we're still um, navigating the changing world of work. And I mean, there's always interesting stuff and I'm writing another book. It's like all happening two years, a lot can happen. Mate, it's nuts, isn't it? And something you said there that really interests me is I've I've never wanted to grow the business, to have loads of employees just for having employees' sake. And you're right. I still have people who saying to me, you could convert mental theft into a training company and have loads of guys out there delivering training and delivering this. And you could do this to Newton's Nuggets and have a team of like six, seven people in the studio. And then I go, yeah, but why don't I take the fun out of it for me? Oh, there's bits that I enjoy doing and there's bits that Jesse enjoys doing. And all of a sudden you're trying to get us to give all those bits away. And, and we just have to, well, I have to be the dancing monkey all of a sudden mm -hmm. because that's what everyone knows me for. And, and the whole creativity of it gets taken away. So yeah. how did you feel when you realized it was going in a direction that wasn't right for Petra? Um, well, these things don't happen overnight, right? So I'd say for three to six months, there was this feeling of struggle. And just like um, I was in more meetings, I was listening to more people, I was like almost diluting my inner voice based on other people's good advice. Um, and there was a dissatisfaction and I kept trying to maybe blame other things like blame personal life or blame, like maybe I'm just feeling a bit off, maybe, you know, whatever. It was like a me problem rather than going, actually, maybe this, I've, the environment is not the one that I intended to create, but you don't know until you know. And it wasn't yeah. anything against anyone like as far as employees, like there was no like toxic person or, or bad behavior. There was nothing like that. It was just like things just, it's like a snowball effect. Right. And suddenly you wake up and you're like, huh, I'm in 18 meetings a week and I'm not on the front line and I'm doing spreadsheets and all the stuff I absolutely hate. And it, I'm not filled with joy. And, and then the, and then the numbers didn't lie. So when you don't feel joy in your business, it started eventually affecting the bottom line. So both of those things were uh, were the catalyst or the wake up call to go, do I um, try harder in somebody else's kind of idea of what I should be doing? Or do I use this as the pause button to be like, something's not right. Actually, we need to take some risks here. So it doesn't feel great at all. You know, the back no. end, it sounds like a wise decision, um, but the re reality is like, it's like, oh, I don't know. I don't understand. You got to wrestle with it. And it's yeah, something that you said there that really interested me is that you will listen to other people's good advice. You didn't want to say other people were giving you bad advice or it was wrong for you, because I honestly think a lot of the time people will give us advice that is great and correct for them. 
but because they're not us, it's not the thing that resonates. Or it's by the book. So, so to create a successful biz business, you must rinse and repeat the same item so that you can teach other people how to do it. And it's almost like a conveyor belt, even though it's a services industry. That's what the books that tell you. That's what the experts tell you, right? But we realize that rinse and repeat takes sucks the joy out of it. And so the other bit about being smaller is we are, we own who we are, which is bespoke, we'll adapt, we're small enough that we can really listen and do what the client wants. And then now we've got that real niche that, that um, you know, is allowing us to thrive when other businesses are struggling. Mate, that's massive. And it's the communication within your organization, when it is that small, when it is that tight, you all know when each other needs backup, help, what's going on in a project. You you do. We're a fully remote business as well. So so people say like, oh, maybe that's tricky, but but it isn't because we spend time getting to know each other, getting to know each other's regular hopes and dreams and aspirations. Like I know, I know every single person in my team. I know what they want out of life, not just what out of work. And so we'll yeah. check in with each other on like, hey, is this literally my team will do it for me now. They'll say, is this still bringing you joy? Or we'll get a client request in and we'll we'll weigh up whether we do it on whether it brings one of us joy because we all have different skill sets. Right. And so my my head of strategy, she's more um, technical, strategic. Right. So things that she bring her joy are not necessarily the things that bring me joy. But just having that language to to assess based on something that isn't about metrics um, really kind of has helped us. I just I cannot imagine a world where I would employ Petra Velzebauer, who I know is awesome. And then I would go, you're now going to sit there and do spreadsheets, Petra. I hate spreadsheets. I'm not even good at them. I'm not the best person. I should not be doing them. <laughs> no, you don't love them. You don't like them. It's not your skill set. You were kind of pushing yourself into doing that. And, and then, yeah. right, I've made this mistake myself as well. I now have the, an awesome Pippa who looks after my diary and bookings and initial inquiries. And I still have a problem with it. I still feel like I'm being too much of an ego to have that person doing these things but then i remember she's amazing at it and i really am not yes so it's for, it, it, as far it, as efficiency it's more efficient actually in certain cases to bring in an expert that's good at certain pieces if, if you're not yeah and she's brilliant at it it's, it's like i was trying to force myself to do the spreadsheets why would you do that let me go and do but, something but creative so the reality is just for the the audience you have to do you have to wear all the hats i see you have lots of hats in the background you have to wear all the hats at the beginning right so yeah. and and that's fair right so it's like about the the timing and the phases of the business and so some people think well i don't want to do spreadsheets but you're 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 a team of one and you just started you got to do the spreadsheets or find other ways to kind of track and do the things right but then it's noticing when you've evolved to the next phase that is the the trick or the magic. So true, so true. And you, and you know what? I think when you're that team of one and you are having to do these things, it kind of means that if you really do have belief in that business, you're going to push through it until you get to a point where you start going, my team seem to be arriving around me and they're valuable and they're wanted and they're great at what they do. Um, and Pippa looks at the world in such a different way to me. And Jesse looks at the world in such a different way to me. But sometimes it helps when you just back off and go, you know what? These people are better at this than I am. I shouldn't take advice from me. Yeah. Ask them how to do that particular element for sure. Yeah. Mate, if you found your person that loves spreadsheets, that is awesome. I think I have. But I'm going to keep that on the lowdown so nobody steals her. <laughs> yeah yeah don't mention her name anywhere because no. <laughs> people will be listening to this going sorry can we book uh, sarah was it we'll, we'll get her. We'll, we'll find <laughs> right so what else has been happening in the world of petra velzebo i mean the keynote talks that i've seen you do i love them i love I'm them doing some bit. pretty cool ones i can't complain i just was in spain speaking to like a thousand people like the stages have gotten bigger but i still do small stages as well i got to do um i got to partner with something called empathy week uh, that we did at Snapchat, which was pretty cool, uh, and got to talk about the theme of home, like what does home mean to me? 
which was meaningful and, you know, mixes up maybe what I speak about normally, which is still the business case for mental health at work. How do we do this uh, effectively in a world of Gen Z coming up? This is the whole kind of chat now, um, but also burnout, talent. People, people are going, life is too short. I do not need to deal with this bullshit, if I may be so bold to use that language. Um, so You are definitely allowed to use that language. Yes. So people are, are questioning things. And then, of course, my um, second book, got, it's all very serendipitous. Like people think I've got this hardline strategy of like, I'll, I'm going to write three books in three years and be on bigger stages. I'm really not. I'm really like following the crumbs as far as the magic of conversation and relationship building, right? So one person introduces you to another person, another person, you know, and it's like offering value to people. And you know this, right? When you offer value to people, then they offer value back. And it becomes this kind of magical experience rather than like, we haven't hit our targets or we haven't hit this milestone. But but you don't know what other magic might be in the the the, the kind of stratosphere if you don't kind of let go a little bit. So I think there's been some learning for me just about letting go, following the magic. And then my publishers came to me and said, can you write a book on digital well-being? So um, that's what I'm in the thick of, uh, you know, addiction to technology, the, all the things, uh, and it's coming out in in January 2025. So um, I'm saying that out loud because I'm in the final stages of draft one, and it's going to persuade me to actually finish it if I've said it out loud. You can do this. You can do that. And actually, <laughs> I think that's a it's a powerful subject. It's a huge subject, though. It's yeah. huge. Um, and and so that's the. The trick, I guess, is to be like, what's my unique voice or message connected to this big topic? But I'm I'm stuck in. It's 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 really necessary as well. Honestly, Petra, knowing you the way I do, I think if you just threw up verbally all of the words and thoughts you have on that subject, I think you've got a bestseller. I'd be okay. Okay, cool. I needed to hear that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I love I'd love reading yourself. Right. So you've got digital well-being coming out in January 25. I know Begin With You uh, was a big one for you and um, it's helped a lot of people. It really has. Um, so what do you think at the moment? Because I'm dealing with a lot of companies who, when they're dealing with me, they want to talk about security and they want to talk about their people and they're worried about their people. And, security. and then I get some management. And I've got to be careful here. I get a lot of management who we've proved to for the last few years that pe these people are happily working remote and they're being productive while they're working remote. And for some reason, I'm meeting more and more managers that are trying to pull all of those happy people back to the office and they've kind of found their happy place and they've got a great work life. Oh, I nearly said balance, but that's a, I see it as a meshing because I don't think you can get a full balance. I, th I see my work and my personal life meshing together in a weird way that I'm just happy as much of the time as I can be. But if you are dealing with managers that I'm finding left, right and centre, who are trying to pull their happy people back to an office and a base that they want to use, how can we make them realise that it's not for everyone? There's a lot of nuance to this topic. So I don't want to say everyone should be staying remote because we do know that Gen Z are feeling lonelier. They're feeling isolated. Perhaps they're in their first ever jobs and they don't have like the, they can't observe the mentors and the people They it's, it's like pretty yeah. tricky. So we, so we do have some sectors of people that need some time in, in offices or, or connecting. And again, my team are fully remote. We're fully flex. Um, we, we're asynchronous. So that means people can work at any, you know, if I, I want to work really early, sometimes nobody's going to judge me for that. My assistant's got young kids. She's sometimes working late. Nobody's going to judge her for that because I don't think the, the email police are necessarily the solution either. I got an email at 9.52, like, what's wrong with you? It's like, well, I was living my best life for four hours with my kids in the afternoon, and I choose to live this way. So I don't know that that's the solution either. The, the, the reality is your, your, any team is unique, right? And it has a unique set of people or, or components to, to it. We sat down with my team and discussed openly how we work. When do we, when do we work at our best? What are the conditions that enable us to work at our best? What are the things that we need? And then you see the, the policies around like three, two or two, three or whatever it is, like come into the office some days. I kind of like that 
not, but, but, but not when you go into the office and you're just on your team's meetings all day, then what's the point of that? So I don't think we've found most places have found the art of like flexibility, listening to their people. And that when they do come in the office, it's about community. I sometimes miss that, like the belonging piece, the creative thinking, like, so there's lots of angles I, that doesn't give you a hard kind of answer, but, but it is like collaborate with your team. Don't think as a manager, you have to make up a policy and then just deliver it and then make, and then people are difficult if they don't adhere to it. Like it needs reasoning and you can do that reasoning together. You don't have to make it all up yourself. You can see, I could rant on that topic. <laughs> but you're right. And I love that. And I think, again, you're making a great argument for your team being smaller, but caring about each other. The bit that you said in that that made me really think was collaborate and talk. Okay. The fact that you, right, you're in a very strange position where you could be the diva of the team. You could be the, this is all built around me, and, and I'm the one who goes out and earns the money. Instead, what you're doing is we are a team. I need to know what everyone else wants from this team. I need to know what makes you happy. And and again, when you said earlier on in an interview that your team turn around to you and go, does this make you happy? They do. They check that's, in on me. That's brilliant, isn't it? When you have a team of people who have enough front attitude, they have the right people skills to turn around to you and go, hold on. Is this actually making you happy and be honest? Because that's the kind of people you need, mate. You you need those people who just go, stop. Why are you doing this? And it and takes you, safety, yeah. right? And and um, giving people very explicit permission. Um, it's like, I think we started with me checking myself in front of them and going, guys, I messed up. Like, I, I went down this path and it doesn't feel like a good path anymore. And I feel it in my body here, here, and here, or it's affecting my relationships here, here, and here. So I'm modeling how to connect the dots between mental health, well-being, and performance be it by saying it. And then we talk about them and now they have permission. It's safe. Petra also challenges her own thinking. Um, and then people do it to me and they'll go, they'll, they'll check me. That. That was a massively powerful thing you just said. Okay. In front of your team saying, guys, I messed up. Yeah. Because hardly anyone wants to admit that if they're in a management position. And and it, it's almost like uh, I'm going to talk UK based. It's almost like when people get into management, they start to think that we can't admit we're wrong. Whereas actually, it's crazy. You can, yeah. Team then become a team and help you. The fact and all right. the yeah. I was just gonna say all the science shows that when we're psychologically safe, which means people admit mistakes, challenge behaviors, challenge groupthink, we are more innovative, we're more creative, we do better work. So, like the science is there, but the missing link for many managers is uh, that that it's vulnerable. And it might show weakness is the conditioning, right? That's what stops people, even though theoretically they might know that, hey, if we're open, we it will lead to this. But it takes the <gasps> moment. You got to get to that bit, the messy middle, as I refer to it, in order to get to the innovation. People don't like sitting there. I've I, So I've happily said to my team of three, yeah, that includes me, um, I don't love being wrong. But you know what? If you can prove that I'm wrong, I'll listen and happily be proved wrong. And it's it's so weird because I trust them to bits. I trust them with personal stuff. I trust them with business stuff. And the nice thing is that we've had a few occasions now when I've said, I don't want to do that because. And then somebody has turned around and gone, yeah, but Paul, think about this and this and this. And we think it would be brilliant because of this. And you're going to be helping these people. That's what makes Paul happy. And when your team know you well enough to go, yeah. I know how to argue this in a way that Paul will stop, stop and listen. Yeah. Mate, yeah. it's yeah, really good. Well, they just have to throw your own stuff back at you, right? And just be like, yeah. uh, last week you said, uh, and this is our, these are our values or approach, right? It, um, yeah. It's like having, it's like when kids do that to you, right? You're like, oh. we, we're going in this direction. And then they go, Last week you said this. They remember everything, don't they? Mm. Do they do? I'll go quieter now. 
my daughter is now coming up to 16 years old. And oh my word, I've had some amazing things thrown back at me. <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> they don't She's intelligent as well, Petra. I'm in trouble. I'm in so much trouble. Right. Okay. So you've moved on. You've realized which parts of your business were, were not making you the happiest Petra that you could be. Yep. You've got a team around you that are supportive of you and of each other. I love the way you're working about the times and the things like that, because we kind of have an unwritten rule. We've got we, we've got various chats, and I'll just say about the WhatsApp themes that. And in there, the rule is, if one of us asks a question, nobody expects an answer quickly, because we're all doing things. Mm, and then nice. I, I've, yeah, I've had I've had Jesse respond to me about things that are 2 a.m. on a Sunday morning. That's because he was awake, and that's when his brain's wired to do that. Fine. Right. I didn't answer that because I was asleep. So you should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's how, as long as we all understand that, and there's no bias towards, well, you didn't do that at 9.05 on a Monday morning. We don't even really recognize the weekly calendar anymore. But I think that should be, and I think that's the way the whole world of work is heading, that it's about judging on outcomes, not on clocking in. That is from the factory days, right, where it was like clocking in, clocking out. And so we know that the education system and clocking in and clocking out is no longer fit for purpose because someone sitting at a computer for eight hours is not productive for all of those eight hours. It is not conducive for creativity and doing good work, right? And so we, the model that set up the workplace, everyone's, there's like this shift, right? We're wrestling with it. And I think that even though there's like burnout and these different negatives, wrestling with it is going to lead to innovation it's just we're just in the messy middle for many bigger companies for sure yeah and that bothers me because i think companies like yours and mine i think we've got a massive opportunity right now because those big companies when when you or i or any member of our team make a decision and throw it up to the rest of the team and the rest of the team go it's amazing yes let's do that you can turn that ship straight away. You can just go, we're going that route. That is brilliant. Yeah, we um, can pivot. Yeah, Bob just brought up a great idea and we're going with it. because We all think it's a great idea. Move. If you think of the world of massive corporates that you and I have both worked in and both helped, somebody who's hardly known in the whole cogwork system says, I've got a great idea. That doesn't get listened to. Or even if it so, does, it will take months and months and probably look very different by the time anything happens with it. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a great example. Somebody who's very low level can have a great idea, pass it to their manager. The manager can only bring it up in the quarterly management meeting. It then only gets taken up to the board level at the other quarter. All of a sudden, it's taken nine months just to get to the person that can make a and, decision on it. And then the whole world's different <laughs> at the rate that it's going, right, with technology and all sorts. Mate, I, I love that. I really do. So I think anyone that's listening to this, if you're running a small team, I mean, that could be one man band. It could be 10 man company. Honestly, grab the opportunity you've got right now. Seriously, listen to me on that one. You've got a chance. So where do you see mental health going where people are still a bit uncertain after the pandemic? People are a bit wary about, do we go back to the office? Do we stay remote? Is this job going to pan out in something that I'm going to want and enjoy? Especially if they're trying to get into the corporate world, which I don't think you and I will ever run. No. No. <laughs> For anyone seeing no. my face, that was a hard no. No. <laughs> um, no. For anyone that's just listened to audio, that was a definite shake of the head. No, we're not running yes. that. Not happening. No. But so mental health, there's, there's lots of elements. What was interesting, when I do keynotes in Europe now, the conversations I have after the keynotes, they feel very much like the UK did five, seven years ago, like they're now ready. So this is interesting yeah. because it's like, yeah. we think that you know the UK and Australia, Canada, those are kind of the ones known as being a bit more ahead of the game when it comes to mental health. Um, the, the other places are now clocking on in a more useful way, right? Rather than like, here's a benefit, call this number if you're struggling or leave the business, which is traditionally what happens, right? We, we still think of mental health as mental illness. Um, but then we're seeing things veer to the opposite extreme. So I'm getting more questions of like, is mental health ever used as an excuse? 
do are the are younger generations lazy are they slacking off because of mental health like is it used you know and i do think there's never i don't think there's this black and white people love that right now we like this us versus them i'm on this side or this side mental health is never used as an excuse i'm not going to say that i think sometimes our diagnosis uh, even people with the diagnosis it acts as a um, kind of backup where we can say, oh, I'm having a tough day. That must be my anxiety condition rather than like, hey, life's a bit stressful right now. We all experience anxiety at some point. It, and, and what you probably need to do is get up, leave your house, maybe work out, see other people like these can be healthy things. Right. So um, I, I'm glad that mental health continues to be um, a, a conversation. I'm still seeing lots of companies do the tick box version, the PR version of well-being, like, oh, we have all these shiny things. But I know with with tech apps and, and that sort of thing, the, the conversation on the background is like low engagement. We've got all this shiny stuff, but nobody's bloody using it because they're all fried from being on their devices. And again, I, this yeah. is a topic I can speak about all day. But, 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 but Petra, this is why I love chatting to you. I know that I can throw one thing at you and you will, you will <laughs> talk go. about and actually, it's not even that. It's not just that you will talk for talking's sake. You will share wisdom that you're trying to help people with. So really appreciate it. I know we're already coming up to the half hour mark, and, and I'm trying to keep the show quite tight these days. So I'm going to ask you that annoying question that I ask everyone towards the end of the show. If you could, if you could give everyone that listens to this thing one nugget of wisdom, one nugget of extra thought moment that will help them in their business or their life what would it be pause and reflect now i know that doesn't sound like a big one but in this day and age people when you ask people how they are they don't say i'm fine anymore they say i'm busy how are you i'm busy that's how people respond about the vast majority so taking five minutes ten minutes a whole morning in your week uh two hours on the weekend to walk journal like don't listen to headphones List like daydream, listen to your own thoughts because that your wisdom is in you. So pause and reflect. Petra, that's awesome, mate. It, that is so awesome. And it feels like you've seen what I've been going through for the last six months. <laughs> and you've kind of listened to I it. Said that. <laughs> yeah. You, you've listened and you've gone, pull, stop, stop. And then you've kicked me out the backside and gone, now go on, carry on. <laughs> You're welcome. Mate, honestly, Petra, thank you so much for spending time with us. Is there anything else you want to say before I cut us off? I think that's good. Check out my book, Begin With You, if you haven't yet. Um, but otherwise, happy to to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, quickly on that, where should we go and get the book? Are we looking at Amazon? Are we looking at bookstores? Or are we going to your own Amazon, website? Amazon everywhere, or the Kogan page is the publisher. It's on their website as well. Brilliant. We will make sure there's links to it so everyone can find it, because I honestly think that your books could be in every person's bookshelf. I love what you're doing, Pedro. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, ladies and gents. Thank you for listening to us. I know how awesome Petra is, and I, I seriously chuffed that she's come back and spent time with us. We're now going to go to the bit of the show where it's me and Jesse talking about the conversation I just had with Petra. We'll see you in a bit. Newton's Nuggets. Welcome back, everyone. Right, we told you she's lovely, she's intelligent, she's funny, and she kicks us up the backside. Yeah, and actually, there were a few lessons in there that I kind of wish I could... Well, I know there's a few people that I'm going to basically point in the direction of. Yeah. I thought... It's something that I've been contemplating a lot recently, and I know um, Chris Dawes started me thinking this, so we've had Chris Dawes on the show quite a few times. Yeah. And really got me thinking about success and things like that because I know that I've been in roles in different places before and your mindset is I've got to keep going I've got to stay here I've got to get to the next level I've got to build I've yeah. got to grow etc 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 and Petra actually saying well no we're better because I've just calmed thing down. down a little bit and, and made it into I didn't a manager. all those people to make it all active and yeah. to be running at this speed when and doing good work actually we're in a good position yeah and that's what worries me okay um i i know that i run for things and i chase things yeah but then you do kind of look around and right so you know that i've had some trouble with my car recently mm -hmm. and i love that car yeah. that car was was a massive reward and and it defies the laws of everyone goes, oh, you get the toy and then you don't care about it. 
screw that, I love it. Yeah. Okay, I still love it. Yeah. Um, and that car for me means so much more than a car. Yeah. And I kind of realised that actually we're in a really good place. You know what yeah. I mean? The, the place we're living in, I know it's rented, but mm-hmm. it, it's, it's a lovely place. Yeah. I'm driving the car that I've wanted for ages. My wife is awesome. Still don't know oh, really thanks. why she's Oh, with, you mean your actual the, the, wife. The contracted wife. You. Um, I still don't know why she's with me, but hopefully she carries on that way. I don't know. Um, <laughs> my daughter's awesome. Yeah. And and if she listens to this ever, well done on your GCSEs, mate. Proud of you. Very proud. Um, but it's it, what am I running for? Okay. And then that made me go, okay, I'm loving the speaking stuff. Yeah. And it pays pretty well. So if I just do one of them a month, plus with the changes we're making to mental theft and to nuggets, yeah, you kind of look around and then go, how hard do I have to work? Mm-hmm. It's, it's a nice feeling. Yeah. And it bothers me that it's taken doing Newton's nuggets to realise this. <laughs> It's taken you doing four years of a show that doesn't pay very well. Yeah, four years of a show <laughs> that we've said would never work. Yeah, and more and more people keep listening. As, as I stated oh, I to you realized. yesterday, no, 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 hold on. I stated to you yesterday that I will happily admit there may be more than twelve listeners. That's a big jump from three. <laughs> That's a big jump. That's like four <laughs> times the amount. I did math. <laughs> There have been a lot of downloads this last month. By those and 12 people, yes. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised as well, if there's anybody who's at that styled wedding shoot where we were talking about what other things I do, and I mentioned the podcast, yeah. and I mentioned the fact that we uh, were once a... Uh, well, twice now, really, technically. We've been a runner-up for a British podcast award. Yeah, we have. Go us. <laughs> how, how did that happen? Um, anyway... <laughs> They, yeah, they didn't include us this year. It definitely had nothing to do with the fact that we said we're not going. <laughs> yeah, we're not a runner-up this year because we didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Jesse are both that tired that we went, London's it's a long way. <laughs> well, because you have to do a lot of work to submit. It's not just... I didn't. Well, true. Yeah. I had I had to do submissions before. Yeah, it was a lot of work. I picked out some things and went, "That's pretty." Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Um, but yeah, so Petra's mindset around that, and actually that led on to all the talks about like your metrics and your KPIs and how you view those. And something she said was unbelievably important to me. Yeah, is understanding what your outcomes are going to be. And measuring yeah. what your wanted outcomes are. Because the number of times, especially people who have been around a long time, who... There's two types of people. There's people who are relatively new, who are just looking for metrics to measure stuff by. And there's people who have been around a long time and are used to the old-fashioned metrics, frankly. Yeah. And I've seen both of those. And the problem is with all of those is, well, does that actually one thing lead to another? Yeah. Because very often, those metrics are just the easiest way to count something. Yeah. Rather than actually going, is this the result that we want? Yeah. You don't care how many times an advert goes out. Yeah. You care how many times the phone rings. Yeah. Because that's an incoming lead because of the advert going out. And you don't... And and the clocking in and out thing, you know, like... It's been very true... Mm -hmm. Very true for some organisations and sales teams that they've understood that selling at doing a nine to five is not the same thing as being a successful salesperson. No. And that's actually true of a lot of jobs. Now, it's a bit different if you're working like contracted hours on a factory floor or something like that, potentially. Um, But realistically, that nine to five thing is kind of I don't think it's that relevant anymore especially for smaller businesses no there's there's some jobs that it's still used in yeah that I don't think it needs to be yeah um and the one that always gets me is 
We want creative people. We want people that are really creative to come in here and do all these fancy things and make all this pretty and make all this amazing. And do, yeah. But they have to work nine to five and have a lunch break at one. Yeah. Why do they? <laughs> uh, well, and the other thing is, is that I've seen a lot of stuff recently where we base that nine to five on the fact that 50% of the population run to that. Yeah. The re- other 50%, so literally half the population, are either... It's almost split in two, either early risers or late risers, and yeah. you're not optimizing for them. So literally 50% of everyone you're not optimizing for. You're ignoring. And actually, if you allow some flexibility and just make sure that they do the job that they need to do and are yeah. available for such. So this is the thing for me. I was always, I always liked working in a, in a world where I had flexibility because I'm quite, well, you know what it's like working with me. I'm either really slow or really fast. Yep. And so there will be a two-hour spurt where I'll get shed loads done and then the rest of it are mosey. Yeah. And so um, and people see the two hours and go, well, if you did that all the time, you'd be it. It's like, well, no. It's like yeah. it's a bit like if you're into motorsport, if you see a Formula 1 driver, they can do a qualifying lap once but they physically can't keep it up for a whole race. And it's the same sort of thing. Just different people work in different ways. Yeah. Some people can just mosey all the time at a decent pace. Mate, it's really that simple. Right. Guys, I hope you got enough from Petra. If you need to contact her, please go visit her website and yeah. have a look at what her and her team are doing. They are absolutely brilliant. And they're lovely to chat to. She really is easy to chat to. So if you think you need Petra to appear or help with your organisation, please get in touch. I know Jesse's going to put some links down in there. Yeah, yeah, the website will be in the Thank you very description. much, um, Nuggeteer of the Week? Yes. Let's do Nuggeteer of the Week. Tony, play that jingle. It's time for the Nuggeteer of the Week. Thanks, so, Tony. Nuggeteer of the Week this week is the lovely, the awesome, the gorgeous Mr. Steve Dimon. So, Steve has helped us out with a few things in the background lately. Yes. That have been massive. I was going to say, you say a few things. Yeah. But quite big things. Yeah, yeah. You, if you want to be, if you want to, he's helping out with one thing. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Is that fair? That's fair. Yeah. So, so the first time I said it, I was kind of wrong on both sides. Yeah. Right? There's one main thing. Yeah. There are a couple of little surrounding things. Yeah. But yeah. Generally yeah. speaking. Yeah. But that... Without confusing the hell out of all the listeners. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for all the help. Doing the visuals. Big. Yeah, for the podcast. Yeah, yeah for yeah. the for the for the audio po- only. For for the audio only, the the podcast listeners only. This much. I'd actually move that hand a bit further away. There you go. That, this much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And it started out as this much. <laughs> sorry, we're idiots. Um, Carry on. Thanks, Steve. And Thanks, we're Steve, sorry. for being. Super awesome because we're clearly idiots. Mate, seriously, the only thing he's got out there so far was a subway. <laughs> yeah, but subway muffins were discovered. They were good. They were good. Oh, I could have got some of them today while I was out. You could have done, but you yeah. didn't. Subway, if you want to sponsor us, just send food. Yeah, muffins, preferably. Meatballs. Oh, meatballs. We might have gone on a tangent. <laughs> Do you remember when this was a business podcast? When? <laughs> when other people were talking. Thank you, Petra. Thanks, Petra. You're awesome. <laughs> I think that's it for today. And, and we have to get going because I need to record something else. Yes, you do. Awesome. Ladies and gents, thank you so much for being here. You are lovely. You are awesome. Please share the show. Please download the show. Please make sure you subscribe to wherever you listen to it. That could be YouTube, could be Spotify, could be iTunes, could be other things that I always forget the names of, and there's a big long list of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Audible. Audible. Uh, Amazon. Google. Google Play. Play? <laughs> Um, well they're not going to sponsor us are they <laughs> well and gents, maybe if they did we'd know what they were called that's true give us an award ladies and gents <laughs> thank you so much for being here we will see you next week on another highly exciting thrilling instalment of Newton's Nuggets
Hello everybody, right, you're on the YouTube page. This is what we want you to do. The first and the most important one is subscribe. It should be just up there. Then if you want to see more Newton's Nugget stuff, it's down there at that one. If you want to see things about the business speaking, hopefully that's up there. And then last but not least, the mental theft stuff we're working on down the bottom there. Go, subscribe. That's the big important one. And you know, share it as well. Why not?